Hi, I recently picked up a new helmet, the LS2 Storm 2. And during this journey of buying a new helmet, I thought of a few key parameters of what I really want from a helmet, what was my decision making process. And I thought I'll share it with you for your benefit. And uh, well, you can use it to pick up the next helmet that you are buying. Or if there are different ways or the, it's, you have a different process of buying a new helmet, you can let me know in the comments, but this is my particular process. So first up uh, is the price or the budget. Uh, each of us has a different limitation in that space of how much money we can spend. And it's a very personal factor to each and every one of us. So determine a budget that you are okay with spending. And just take into consideration that a helmet is, when you use it, a life-saving device that is when you have a crash it is going to probably protect your head from serious injury so consider that before allocating a particular budget to the helmet that you're going to buy for me it was in the mark of a 12 to 15 thousand rupees uh, this is a helmet that i plan to use inside the city uh, i do have fairly better helmets for my touring sunday rides uh, so on and so forth. So I thought that this is a decent budget to start off with Also do consider that there is a spares cost involved uh, Whether you buy some of the spares up front or uh, later when you're trying to um, Replace some of the spares like a visor or some cheek pads which have gotten spoiled over time So consider those into your purchase uh, process as well and availability of the same is a very big uh, factor that you should consider finally uh, after this the second factor that i think is very important is purpose what is your purpose for me the purpose was very clear that i want a city helmet um, and maybe the occasional sunday rides uh, that i want to take this helmet on so Basically, that was my purpose and with that, I was okay with buying a regular road-based full-face helmet and that is what I wanted. In your case, it might be a touring specific or a adventure specific helmet that you want to buy. So your purpose will determine the format of helmet you are picking. Uh, so in general, there are only four formats. So you get a half face, you get the modular helmets you get the regular street oriented uh, helmets which are basically the most common format and then you have the dual sport or mx adventure type of a helmet which has a peak it has a wider eye port in some cases you don't get the clear visor so what is your purpose of buying the helmet is something that you need to kind of finalize before uh, bringing in your options on the table right uh, now, third very important uh, factor to consider is the features. And in my search, I had some features which were a must have and some features which were good to have. Uh, must haves you can't compromise on and good to have is something that you can compromise on. So in my case, a must have was a certification. Um, I was looking for the best certification possible. I know that it's a city helmet, but that's where the highest probability of a crash is inside the city uh, due to all of the traffic around us. So I did uh, want to buy a ECE 2206 rated helmet. So that was a must have for me. Apart from that, my must haves was, well, the buckle or strap system. I wanted to have a strap that was a micrometric buckle and not a double D-ring. Uh, and this is because I want this helmet for a city usage where double D-ring becomes more of an inconvenience rather than an enabling factor for the particular helmet and for that particular purpose. Apart from that, well, good to have, um, and I think for me, even this particular feature was a must have, is a sun visor. So internal sun visor, which you have on the inside, um, I personally do get affected by bright light a lot and I do like having a helmet with a sun visor because carrying separate sun goggles 
uh, while you are riding taking them off putting them on again storing them properly is a bit of a hassle and i am known to forget or break sunglasses during this process so i would prefer to have the internal sun visor what features are good to have well uh, internal uh, bluetooth communication pockets it was a good to have feature not really necessary i would have uh, gotten a slightly tighter fit on my ear if the pockets weren't there i would have still installed uh, the bluetooth communication but yeah that's how uh, i would consider that fact apart from this pin locks uh, that is a anti fog uh, layer inside the box well this was also a good to have feature but not a must have because i can supplement it by buying uh, it separately or not buying it at all because the use case was city riding right um and uh, finally the vents i did want a helmet that vented very well but again uh, the size and number of vents and how well it ventilates uh, wasn't such a crucial factor neither was the weight of the helmet so i was okay with the helmet being slightly on the heavier side um so these are the features that were must have for me and good to have you can allocate these features as per your requirement and this will help you kind of finalize a list of helmets down to top 5 picks top 10 picks so on and so forth and beyond this is where the next feature comes into a big play when you finalize say 3 4 5 helmets it is the fit first up is the size you need to wear the proper size when you buy a new helmet it will be tight and it should be what you have to watch out for is you should not get specific pressure points on your crown and temple apart from that if the cheeks are really tight that's good it shouldn't be unbearable but it should just be tight enough that it is a little bit like this and when you do buy a helmet the helmet should not be able to move without moving your cheeks and head around so if a helmet is loose it will be able to move forward backward like this and sideways like this if it is loose but when it's tight it can't do it without moving my cheek and my head i know i know that look funny but it's the best way i think of of showing this without actually wearing a helmet and then there are visibility issues in what it should actually look like or feel like right so size get a proper measurement for your size that is the circumference circumference sorry of your temple you might be between uh, sizes that's fine so go for the slightly smaller size if you are between sizes because the cheek pads do uh, there is a break in period so they do break in and then instead of having a loose helmet it's better to have a slightly tightish helmet uh, at the end of the day and then after that you also get the other aspects of the fitment so how well do the cheek pads kind of match the contours of your face how well does the crown liner comfort liner sit on your crown and the overall shape of the helmet so you do get multiple different head shape types um, so i think there's long oval intermediate oval all of that stuff in india you don't have that luxury in most cases you basically just have to try out the different brands and different sizes and pick the one that is the best fit and the most comfortable where once you finalize a good fitting helmet wear it for 4 5 minutes walk around the store if you can and just wait for the pain points to emerge if any if there are no pain points at the end of 5 10 minutes that helmet's good to go so those were basically the main factors that i used to kind of make my choice and at the end of that the last factor is color we all like a nice flashy colorful helmet or depending on our personality slightly subdued colors matte colors so on and so forth so i think it is an it is a definitely an interesting factor 
but it should not be in the priority of factors that is there sacrifice on the color if you are getting a really good fit in a different color that you may may not like so that's a uh, very important uh, to take up over there now what do i usually buy when i buy a helmet so along with the helmet i usually pick up a spare visor usually a dark smoke or a light smoke uh, in the case of the ls2 that i have i picked up uh, the mirror iridium and looks uh, really really sexy with that uh, apart from that i also pick up uh, an anti fog insert if it is not already coming with the helmet then i also pick up a helmet bag uh, sometimes the bags the carry pouches that they provide with the helmet is not of uh, such a great caliber and if you are buying a expensive helmet 8 10 12000 above probably invest in a helmet bag which may cost about 1500 to 2000 rupees that it will protect your helmet when you are not using the helmet um, and that's a good advice and i personally follow it uh, for my expensive helmets that is the climb and the ri i have dedicated helmet bags for both the models and they always stay inside the helmet bag when they are not in use along with some uh silica packets to absorb the moisture and uh, after helmet bags do consider buying a helmet sanitizer it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a motoring related sanitizer spray it can also be something which is antibacterial antifungal like a detol uh, spray as well um which not the thing that throws out droplets but more of the aerosol one uh not only will this uh, keep the helmet clean but it will also keep the helmet smelling nice for a longer period of time and it will reduce the number of times you have to remove the liner and wash it and which can be a bit of a task and finally i do also pick up if you if i don't have one uh, which now i do but uh, a microfiber cloth this is for cleaning the inside and the outside of the helmet and also a visor cleaning cloth which is slightly different so you get these cloths that are dedicated for cleaning your specs or sun goggles which is a higher grade of microfiber maybe it's a different material i'm not sure but you get it uh, you get one by scotch bright it's on amazon i'll drop the link in the description uh, do pick it up and it makes a big difference when you're cleaning your visor with this particular kind of a cloth versus a microfiber or versus a regular cloth you'll find that your visors last for a much longer longer period of time uh, i have been very regular in cleaning my climb visor now the visor itself cost some 6 7000 rupees and many times it's not available in india abroad it cost 5 6000 rupees Uh, and i've had that visor on my helmet for one year and i've done a number of rides in wet mud whatever you name it but i've always cleaned it very nicely with this visor cleaning cloth and the scratches on that visor are still fairly minimal so definitely consider using that if you are not already using it and with that i would like to conclude this video uh do let me know in the comments if you have other factors that help you dis- make your purchase decision for helmets um that maybe i should consider for my next purchase whenever that happens or if you have any questions or queries about the helmet that i picked up which is the ls2 storm 2 uh, ec 2206 rated or the helmets that i mentioned uh, during this video or any other con- point of conversation that you want to have use the comment section or you can just dm me on instagram my id is the same tallgayrides with that i'll catch you later